science classroom reminds me of my graduate school before I started my first company. It was probably the worst couple years of my life. It was, uh, it was three years almost without hope. I have a PhD in physics. Uh, Sebastian, when he started talking about this, uh, when we started introducing us, talk, talked about how I, put a sat I helped put a satellite into orbit. Uh, and you know, to go into physics to get a PhD, you have to be pretty passionate about it. It's not something you casually do. And at the beginning of my degree, I was very, very motivated to do it. I'm sure a couple of people are taking physics here. I hope you like it as much as I did. I used to go to the physics library and I'd like go to the library books and just imagine reading all these books because there's more than you can read and just really want to do that. But after I started, the first three years was doing a lot of classroom learning, the stuff that got me into it. The second three years I switched and I started going into doing research. And as much, uh, as, highly regard, as, high, as, as highly I regard research, it just wasn't what I'd gotten into. And I continued to, to pursue my degree, basically because I said at the beginning, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do, if I said, if I, said I was going to do it, I'm going to do it. Looking back now, I would say, for three years of my life, I chose to go to do something that I didn't want to do. Basically, I was doing a lot of debugging. I mean, if you go into programming, maybe you like debugging, I don't know. But in physics, you don't really like debugging. I mean, when you're, you know, when you're learning physics, you learn about like Galileo and Newton and Einstein. And you're like, obviously, Spoda, I'm going to be the next one after that. Because you don't learn about the people who are sitting there debugging. And then you realize one day, maybe I'm doing this debugging. I don't want to be that person. And so I want to talk about choices and choosing. Because while today I look back and say that I was choosing to go every day to do something I didn't want to do, at the time it wasn't apparent to me that I was choosing. I was just kind of following, doing tomorrow what I did yesterday just because I didn't think about doing anything else. And over time I came to, to develop a way of looking at choosing that became very important to me. And I hope will be important to you. It's a very visual way of looking at it. Uh, and by the way, in the word decide, does anybody know the root of the word decide, especially the C-I-D-E. I see one in the back. A few people. Does it, who knows what, what C-I-D-E stands for? Cut. Cut. Yeah. It's also, I can say it even stronger. C-I-D-E is the same side that's in fratricide or pesticide or herbicide. It can also mean kill. For a lot of people, when they think about choosing, they think, I could choose this or I could choose that. And thinking, like, which one would they like? It's very easy to choose the one that you like. The hard part about deciding is getting rid of, is killing, is cutting off the one that you don't like. So there I was in, when I was finishing up my physics degree, and I don't know what it looks, for you, what it looks like for you guys. Uh, you guys, a lot of you look like you're in school, you probably have some decisions ahead of you. For me, it looked like this. I could continue what I was doing and go into academia. And by the way, my experiment was a really great experiment. The people who, who were all, uh, the other students with working with my, uh, with my um, advisor. They got jobs here, Caltech, Columbia, NASA. It was like a really great experiment. The thing is that when you're working on something you don't want to do, and you keep doing it even when you don't want to do it, the reward that you get at the end gets worth l even less. Like a diploma becomes worth less than the piece of paper it's print printed on. And I can say this now because Years later, looking back, I've rediscovered my love for physics and, and, and nature. Uh, but at the time, it was really it was a bad idea. Another choice was I could go into, uh, into industry, which would be aerospace or defense, which is totally uninteresting to me. Or I could like, make 10 times more money and go on to Wall Street, which was like, the least interesting of all. So I was kind of stuck not really knowing what to do. Another thing about choosing, actually, Ultimately, I ended up starting my first company. And that was something I decisively decided to do. But it didn't really uh, become as clear to me until many years later, after I started my first business, uh, I went back to get an MBA. I was in business school. And there's something that happened second year in business school that a lot of your classmates, you know, I came in as an, as, a, as an entrepreneur, I wanted to lead as an entrepreneur, I did. But a lot of people want to go into banking or consulting, you know people like this? And there's like, there's something that happened to me, and when, it, when I saw this happening, it started to make my skin crawl. And I hope that you guys get this effect happening to you, that your skin like crawls. And someone's going to ask questions at the end of this. And if you see me, 
and my, I go like this, it's because my skin is crawling. They say <laughs> something like this. I got a job from, I got an offer from McKinsey and I got an offer from Goldman and I don't know which I want to do. Like maybe I go this one's more money and this one has more prestige. I, I don't know what to do. And now most of us are thinking from outside, like they're both great or maybe they're both terrible. I don't know you, but like just make the choice. But the people when they're doing it, they're having a very hard time choosing because they're thinking of like they're both almost equal. You know, if one's really bad, if one's really awesome and one's terrible, you take the one that's awesome, you forget the one that's terrible. Well, they're both really close. Even when you're picking one, you're thinking about the other one. And even after you pick it, you think, maybe I'll regret this later. And around that time, I picked up a model, uh, a mental visualization for choosing that I want to share with you guys. I hope it's effective for you. It's my skiing model. You can do it with surfing too, but there's this picture up here of someone who's skiing. Uh, I hope everyone here has some ex experience skiing, or at least they know something about it. A lot of times when you're skiing, you're going down the mountain, and there's a place where the path diverges. Sometimes into two paths, sometimes into three or more paths. And when you're skiing down, sometimes you stop and you look down and you say, I could go down this path, but there's a turn and I can't see past the turn. I could go down that path, there's a turn and I can't see what's, down, what, what's, what's beyond that turn. And so I don't know which is a better path for me to take. Maybe it gets too hard, maybe that one has too many people on it. And you might think, I mean, you really wish that there was a giant rewind button in life, that you could go down one all the way to the bottom, press the giant button, go back up again, go down the other, press the button and go back up again, and now based on knowing which one is the best one, you go down and go to the best one. But something about choosing important things in life is that oftentimes you have no possible way of getting all the information you would like to have. You can analyze all you want, you can wait all you want, you can never get all the information you want. And so what I decided, my perspective on choosing was that if you're thinking about which one to take, which one not to take, and you're standing there, you're not living your life. You're not skiing. And so the best thing you can do sometimes is to choose. And I'm not saying choose prematurely. If you have a, if you, if sometimes you know useful information will come. But at a certain point you realize that's not going to happen anymore. The best thing you can do is choose one, and once the other one is, is gone, the best thing you can do is live your life as best you possibly can. Go down that slope and enjoy it as much as you possibly can. I mean, you could, I guess, imagine like going back up the slope. That's not a useful thing to do in life. And so when you start thinking about, say you're thinking about one job off or another, you can start thinking to yourself, Instead of which one is better, which one is worse, what will I miss out if I choose the wrong one? You start thinking, you get into what, what I like to call the execution mindset, which is you start thinking about what am I going to do next? How am I going to take advantage of what's going to happen next? How can I start that job before I start it? How can I start that company now before I'm done what I'm doing? Because if you're going to love it, you might as well start now. Yeah, I, I guess I, a little while ago I was reading something that you probably know. I hope you, if you don't know, it's probably useful to know. Is that letting go of people, if you, probably you guys are going to be running companies or in important positions managing something in life. And I guess I was reading that a lot of times pe the decision to let people go for whatever reason is often made too late. I was reading about that and I thought... As I was reading it, it reminded me of one of the few times at my company that I started when I was crying at work. And what happened was that I had not chosen what the decision that had to be done. Anybody would have known what decision had to be made. It wasn't that the, the people were good people. They were doing great work. But the company wasn't doing well at the time. And ultimately, we had to let people go. And by not making the decision on time, or soon enough, ultimately, this is really difficult to say, ultimately, by making that decision too late, I ended up being one of the people later of the company that I helped found that had to be let go. I say this years later, I, was back in, I am back in the company now and playing a major role. But that's what happens when you let decisions happen 
around you in life, as opposed to thinking about what you want to do. So along with that picture of, of the skiing model, I've also developed an algorithm that, I hope, I hope this is a useful one. You guys, it may be the best algorithm for you, it might not be the best algorithm for you. But I think it's useful to have one in general. So when, when a choice comes my way, when a decision comes my way, I have multiple options, two options, many options, I'm not sure. The first thing I do is think to myself, can I get rid of any of them? Are there any like really junky options? Or actually, the first thing I say, is there one that towers over all, all the rest? If there is, take that option, go with it, move ahead. Ski, enjoy life. If there's a couple that aren't, I'm not really sure which is the best and which is the worst, well, first go through and try to eliminate all the ones that I can that are not candidates for being the best. Just let go of them. And the more I do this, I think it's like a skill that I develop. I can forget these things and I don't really think about it. Of the ones that are left, I just start thinking to myself, the choice is not, okay, if they're, if they're really about equal, and I can't choose among them, maybe one's faster, maybe one makes more money, maybe one's more fun, and I can't really compare those things, I switch my mindset from asking myself, which one is the best option, which one is not the best option, and I start thinking to myself, how do I want to live my life? Do I want to live my life analyzing and, and studying, or do I want to live my life by taking charge and making decisions choosing my decisions deliberately by myself, and then, and not necessarily by myself, but you know, deliberately choosing my choices, and then living according to them. And this way of living is much more effective. In preparing this, I was trying to think of what decisions I've made recently that I could give as examples of, here's a big decision that I made that was much easier by following the decision. And what I realized was that since switching over to this way of looking at things, of looking at skiing down the slope, taking, making decisions deliberately, these decisions that plague people that I see, that make my skin crawl when I see other people like trying to deliberate these, about these things, they don't happen anymore. I just enjoy skiing. I guess I kind of think, I feel like a skier is really good, skis a lot more and stops a lot less. And so that's what I wanted to leave you with. I hope I give you a couple of vivid pictures of when you get to a choice and you have multiple options, think about the activity of what you can do after you make the choice. And if you or someone you know is trying to decide between Coleman and McKinsey, I hope that you just kind of, your skin crawls. Mm -hmm. It's one part of leadership and taking charge of your life, but I think it's one of the most important ones. You're, you're, the culmination of the decisions and the choices you make in your life.